Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi and today we're gonna to be talking about a couple new items. We got some sneak peeks of some reviews I'm working on like the Lisa Eldridge eye pencils and so forth. But the meat of today's video, we are looking at the Hourglass palettes. So I picked up two of them. I have the Owl, which is customizable. I have this in option three, which was the snake palette and then the jellyfish, which is the lightest. So option one. So I've got the lightest and the deepest. We're going to take a look at those. We also have the new Hermes lipstick in shade Rouge Bruni or Brunei. And we're going to take a look at this one also. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start off with a little bit of a today's get ready with me. And then we've got lots of demos and thoughts and more detailed swatches that will follow. All right, so we're gonna do a quick get ready with me. I have some additional clips of everything as well, so we'll be talking about those. But I'm gonna start off, I have the Clay de Peau um, Brightening Enhancer Veil on my skin right now, as well as the Suku Eye Primer, so those are already on. And then in this Clay de Peau cushion, I actually ran out of my cushion, so I added some of this the foundation. So this one from Clay de Peau in shade I-10 to that, and I just kind of tried to try to press it into my cushion a bit. So that's what I'll be using for my base makeup. And let's get started. I'm gonna take the Artiste brush in Digital Oval number eight and just kinda put this on. And we'll see, I haven't used this brush in a Cushion Compact before, but I like the way it kind of acts almost um, almost more like a makeup sponge because it is so dense. So you can pat this on and get, you know, more of a sponge-like appearance versus a brush where you might get some brush strokes and so forth. So I thought, you know, might as well try and see how it does with the compact. And overall, I'm enjoying this. So um, I do like these because these brushes are so dense, they're also really nice for buffing in like powders and things like that. So I think this brush in particular, the Digit Oval 8, works really well with like powder foundations also. So I think that's it for that. And I've been wearing the Hourglass palettes since they came in a couple days ago. So um, yeah, that's what I'm going with today as well. But first, let's do concealer. And I have really been using the Ciroc concealers a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and use shade number three under the eyes. And I don't have much pumped up in there, so it's a very light layer. Just gonna kinda use my finger here for this. Put this in. And things have been really kinda hectic and crazy recently. Uh, just this weekend we had a birthday party for my sister. It was a surprise party. So we had that, you know, we've got kid stuff going on like crazy. This is shade one. I'm just getting a little bit more brightening here in, in our corner portion. And let's put just a little bit on the outside as well. But yeah, things have been crazy. You know, my daughters are doing like a ton of extracurricular activities. My oldest is starting an instrument this year as well. And, you know, she does this program called Girls on the Run, which is like running, you know, twice a week and so forth after school. And, you know, she's basically in something every day. So it's been really hectic. For powder, I'm going to go ahead and do the Suku. This is the pressed powder in shade 103. I'm just gonna go ahead and use my finger for this. Just pat that under the eyes right now. Just a little bit. I've really been enjoying this. And real quickly, I am gonna swatch these together uh, when we do the full video when I get my Suku anniversary collection. But here is the pressed powder in lavender versus the oil rich glow loose powder. So this is the one that came out last year and I did order the new one, but you can see the difference here in the powder. The older one is a little bit more blue and the new one is slightly more radiant. When you buff it into the skin, you just see a little bit more luminosity. I don't think you can tell the radiant part as much with a swatch, but when you buff it into the skin, you can really see. The biggest difference in 
these powders that you can see from a swatch is that this one is just slightly more blue. So I've been using the blushes in the Jellyfish palette. I love them, they are great for uh, my complexion, my skin tone, um, but I wanted to play with some of these deeper ones here today. And I wanted to go into, let's go into this shade here, number five, which is Mystic Flush. I'm taking the Classic Cheek from Sonia G for this one. Just gonna kind of pat this on lightly. I'm gonna skip bronzer today, but uh, for the bronzer, you know, the one in the, the Jellyfish palette works for me, obviously. These ones here, which is in my owl palette, this is option three, the deepest. So it was the snake originally. Uh, that is way too deep. So <laughs> yeah, I don't use those as bronzer, but I bought that knowing they'd be too deep for use on the face. I bought them for eyeshadow use. So uh, I do have a demo showing you that as well, but let's go ahead and we are going to use one of the finishing powders to kind of buff in this blush a little bit. I'm gonna take the lightest shade here. This is the one I've been using the most. This is shade Ethereal Light. And I really like this one. A lot of times the finishing powders in the Hourglass palettes are too deep for me. This is the Buffer Pro from Sonia G. Uh, but this one, you know, it's cooler. It's, you know, it's more white. <laughs> and uh, it works better for my skin tone. Whereas the uh, one here at the top, that is going to be uh, this shade. I think that was Diffuse Light, yes. So, you know, we've seen that one before and it's just, it's a little bit more golden on the skin. So this is diffuse light. You can see it definitely adds some brightening to my skin as well. Helps diffuse the, the blush a little bit also, but you can see that that's a nice coral shade. For the highlight though, I'm gonna take the Sonia G Detail Pro and I'm gonna go into this shade here, which is going to be our Opal Strobe Light. And I've been really liking this, this shade. This is a nice highlight shade. You can see, you know, it's a little bit more subtle here, but in the demos, you'll see, you can really get this to be a blinding light as well. And I do think, you know, for me at least, it's a little bit too much to use under the eyes, which sometimes with um, highlighting powders, I can do that. But with this one, it's just a little bit too metallic. Uh, it's very obvious, even with a very light hand. So I've also been using the Lisa Eldridge eye pencils for, um, it's probably been almost a week now. This is the shade Ground Coffee, and I think it's a really nice deep brown. This is the first time I'm using this particular shade on the eyes, but I thought we'd go ahead and use this along with the Hourglass shadows on here. I've been testing these. I will have a full review of these coming up very soon. They are very creamy. You can see how easily that goes on. Let me just focus in on the eyes. So I'm going to take this Hakuhodo brush. This is from the Winter Lights set last year, and I'm just going to kind of, kind of soften that up. And just going to kind of take some of this into the crease a little bit as well, just for a little bit of depth there. And then I'm going to cover this with the um, highlighter shade in the deeper palette from Hourglass. All right, so now I'm going into this shade here, which is the Strobe Light in Infinite Strobe Light. And this is in the palette option three. So uh, Snake, or this is what I have in my Owl palette. I'm just gonna go ahead and put this on top here. And you can see that it is a golden shimmery shade. All right, I'm just gonna take this and whatever product is left on here, put it on the lower lash line. I don't really want too much down here. And then I'm just gonna take a second, add mascara and brows, I'll be right back. All right, so those are the eyes from a distance. And now we're going to zoom in one more time, but this time for lips. So this is the third Hermes lipstick shade. This is the shade number 72, Rouge Bruni or Brunei. And let's just see, ooh, it's really pretty. That's a really nice soft red. So you can see one sheer layer versus three layers. And let me just zoom in and we're gonna test this one out.
And then this is the new Chanel lip liner in, this one is 180 Rouge Brick. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add this around the lips as well and just kind of see how they go together. So here's the swatch of Rouge Brick from Chanel along with the Hermes. You can see that this is going to be a warmer shade, but I thought it was worth trying them together. All right, so here it is with the lip liner. And I like to go in with the lip liner afterwards because it not only crisps up the color a little bit, but uh, I do think it blends nicely with the lipstick and it adds a little bit of a barrier. Obviously, if feathering and bleeding though is an issue and you're using a lip liner to really prevent that, you probably wanna put it on first to kind of get that layer and that base. So uh, just something to note there. But again, those are the swatches and this is definitely gonna be a little bit warmer, but it still is in the more neutral range. So I think it actually matches fairly well with the lipstick and I will have a review on these soon. I just need another day or two of dusting these and then I will have my conclusions ready. So this is today's final look and let's go ahead. We're gonna talk about all the different products that we are looking at today and I'll give you my thoughts and you can see the other demos as well. So I hope that little get ready with me was helpful and I thought we could go ahead and take a look at you know, let's start off with the Hermes lipstick. So this is the Hermes lipstick. You can see we go from kind of this teal blue to a yellow ombre, really beautiful, fits in nicely with the other ones from this collection. Let's just swatch them all together. So this is the Rouge Bruni. And then this one here is number 90 Prune Noir. This is my favorite. It is such a gorgeous shade. You know, you've got some purple in there. Uh, really, really beautiful, almost like a purpley berry shade, but it can be very sheer and light as well. And then this one here is number 84 Rouge Abyss. And let's go ahead and put that one right here. This one's gonna be your cooler tone, more burgundy with a little bit of red and berry in here as well, but it doesn't really have the purple so much. Really beautiful shade. And then the Rouge Bruni, this is actually more of a neutral red. There is a little bit, there's more warmth to it than any of the other shades, but it's more of a neutral and not actually a warm red. So I thought it was gonna be more brick red. It's not quite there. It's really just kind of more smack dab in the middle neutral red, but I think it's gorgeous. I love the finish of these. This is the shiny or brillant finish. So, you know, it's kind of a glossy, balmy lipstick. So feels like a lip balm or a lip gloss almost on your lips, but it's going to have more pigment. It's definitely buildable. So these are something though, with this type of formula, you are looking at things that can kind of shift and move. So if feathering and bleeding is an issue, that is something that can happen with this formula. So just something to note there, depending on you know what your preferences are formula-wise. Now, just for a couple of comparisons, I did wanna compare some of the Sisley. These are the Fido Rouge Shine lipsticks. This one here is 31 Sheer Chili. I just wanted to show you how these compare. <laughs> These are going to be a little bit less of an oilier texture than the Hermes. You can see that this one's warmer. It's got a little bit more like a neon orange to it in comparison. We also have 41 Sheer Red Love. This is gonna be cooler in tone. You can see you definitely have some pink in there. Got a little bit more like fuchsia. And then this one here is 40 Sheer Cherry. And this one is the closest of those three, but it is going to have a cooler pink hue to it as well. I also wanted to look at this. This is the Bobbi Brown uh, Lip Tint in, or Extra Lip Tint in Bare Cherry. So this is kind of what it made me think of. This is gonna be sh more sheer. It does not build up as much as the Hermes. It has more of a balmy texture, uh, not quite as glossy, but you can see that it's ever so slightly cooler but it's very similar to our sheer shade here. So the sheer swatches there are very, very close. So if you like the more sheer look, this actually might be a really good option as well. I also want to take a look at the um, Amorfu. 
from Viola FR. These are the matte lipsticks. Let's go ahead and put this here. So this will be like a matte lip balm, but color wise, again, this is going to be similar to the sheer swatch from the Rouge Bruni. This is actually a little bit cooler in tone as well. There's a bit more pink to it. So those are kind of my comparisons of this. And I do have comparisons of Prune Noir and Rouge Abyss in the video for those. I'll leave that linked down below in case you missed it. Now let's go ahead and move on to the Hourglass Holiday Palettes. So I typically don't pick up their holiday palettes because in the past their lightest options have still been kind of on the warmer side or, you know, maybe I could use half the colors and half of them were too deep or, you know, just too many repeats. So this year I ended up picking up two of the palettes and I was very excited to try these out. So I have to say my jellyfish one feels heavier than my owl palette palette. <laughs> um, but when these first launched, we have four different cover designs and you can customize these on the hourglass website. But if you purchase from another retailer like Sephora, which they're not available yet, but it should be very soon, uh, then you are getting, you know, the palette with their, you know, their, their pre-designed colors inside. So the jellyfish is your lightest option. Option two is your medium. That is going to be your leopard artwork. And the snake is option three, the deepest. Now I wanted to get option three because it did have quite a few new colors. And I thought that these browns would make really nice eye colors. So I picked up option three in the owl palette, which is exclusive to the hourglass website. So if you want the owl, you will have to purchase from hourglass directly and you can pick, you know, which option color option you would like to go in that. These have had a price increase. They retail for 90 us dollars. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to swatch these and we're going to start off with this one here, this is our jellyfish, which is color option number one. Mm. So this first shade is our diffuse light. This is one of the ambient lighting powders. And you can see that this is going to be kind of like a pale yellow shade. And that's not a new shade. We've seen that in many palettes before. Then we do have a new blush. So this second shade here is one of their blushes in Rose Fusion. They're describing it as a cool mauve. I would describe it as a neutral rose. So it's still not overly cool in my opinion. And then we have a strobe light or a highlight. And this is going to be an opal strobe light and they're describing it as a pale rose gold. This is a new shade. This is really pretty. I actually think it's more of a pale rose champagne. It doesn't have as much gold in it like an actual rose gold would that that tends to lean a bit warmer. This is definitely going to be a bit cooler. I think it is a gorgeous highlighter. I'm really enjoying it. And then we have the bronzer, which is a new shade. This is called Lunar Bronze. And this is going to be a warm tone brown. So you can see that we do have some warmth to there. There's some golden undertones in here. It's not really orangey, but it definitely is golden. And then we have a blush. This is not a new blush. This is going to be diffused heat, which is described as a vibrant poppy. I think this is a really pretty shade. It's one that I did not have yet, uh, but you can see it's actually a very light, soft pink. And this actually has some peach to it. So, you know, I think poppy isn't quite the right color, but perhaps it's just the way that my particular one mixed because you can see I have a lot of white in there, but it really seems more of a, a more pink based coral than a, a poppy. And then we have another lighting powder. This is ethereal light and I did not have this shade. So this is new to me, but it is not a new shade in the powder. So um, that's, they're describing it as your cool translucent powder. To me is really, you know, white. If you buff this in, you do get some luminosity there, but it's not sparkly. So I think that this jellyfish color story is really nice. I really like how you've got cooler and warmer tone options here. You're still staying in that light palette. Then for the owl, I mean, look at this. <laughs> we ended up going with option three here. And I wanted to pick this up because we actually have 
five new shades here. So the five of the six shades in this palette are new, which is great news. You know, Hourglass you know, isn't really known for having deep color stories. So I thought this one was worth checking out. So this is our first shade here. This is the Lighting Powder in Radiant Light, which is described as a golden beige. You can see that you definitely, I think golden beige is a good term for it, but you do have a little bit of an orangey vibe in there as well. And it's definitely gonna be light and warm. And yeah, you know, that one's not new. But this one here is a new blush in Coral Haze. And this is described as a pink coral. Really beautiful. You can see it's definitely deeper, more red than the poppy shade in the Jellyfish. I think this is a really beautiful shade. You can use this on light or fair skin as well because you can definitely just dab on a little bit. Next, we have a strobe lighter. This is Infinite Strobe Light, described as a warm gold. This is new. And to me, it's not really more of a warm gold. It's more of a warm bronze. So we have yeah, more of that bronze look. Again, you've got a hint of orange in kind of all of these shades. Then next up, we have a new blush in Sunbeam, which is described as a rich peach. I would say it's a peachy copper. You definitely have, you know, the richness of like bright, fresh copper in there. I think it's a really beautiful orange. Honestly, it's like sunset. And then we have a new blush in Mystic Flush, which is described as a mid-tone pink coral. And you can see that this is actually gonna be warmer in tone than the other blush, which was Coral Haze. So this is kind of more neutral. This is gonna be slightly warmer and you have just more of a, a warmer red mixed in there. And then last up, we have a new bronzer in Solar Bronze, which is described as a rich bronze. And this is kind of like a slightly warmer milk chocolate. So I actually really like this shade. Think of like melted milk chocolate mixed with just a little tiny bit of extra warmth in there. Um, so again, I'd say the warmth is slightly orange, but it's not really an orange shade. So these are option one and option three for the Hourglass Color Stories. Now, before we talk about those specifically, this is the only other Hourglass uh, palette I have at the moment. And this is the Diffuse Light uh, Rose Edit palette that came out, the Diffuse Rose Edit. And I just wanna share with you what we have. And we've got this powder here is going to be the same as it's the Diffuse Light Shade that we have here. And then we have a blush. The blush is called Rose Flush. I think this is a really pretty blush. I'm gonna go ahead, well, let's just put it here so you can kind of see. But you can see that it's not gonna match up with either of these. It matches best with this poppy shade, but is much deeper. Tonally though, it's more similar to this. Uh, it, the shade here in the Jellyfish is just gonna be a little bit cooler. And then we have the Supernova strobe light. And let's go ahead and compare that to this one up here. And you can see that this is gonna be more ivory. It doesn't have that rosy hue that we get in the Jellyfish palette. So let's look at some demos and talk about these products. So starting off with our Jellyfish palette, this one includes three best-selling shades. We've got two finishing powders and one blush. So those are the ones that are not new. So that's the Diffuse Light Powder as well as the Ethereal Light Powder and the blush, the, the, the second to last shade in the palette, Diffuse Heat, which is described as your vibrant poppy. And so those are our three repeats. And then we do have three new shades. So we have the new blush in Rose Fusion. We have the new highlighter in Opal Strobe Light and the new bronzer in Lunar Bronze. And I have to say, I think that this Jellyfish palette is gorgeous. Now in the demos, you know, I am primarily using this one kind of all over the face. This is a great face palette for fair to light skin. All of the shades are definitely usable. You've got warmer shades, you've got cooler shades, you can mix and match. 
And you could of course use these on the eyes as well. But moving on to option three, according to Hourglass, you know, this includes the ambient lighting powder and radiant light, which is not new, along with the five new shades for blush, bronzer, and highlighter to diffuse, enhance, and add glow to the complexion. And I have to say, this is definitely intended for deeper complexions, but it does make a really nice eye palette. And I was thinking, you know, from the photos online when I first saw this, I think that photos make it look slightly more neutral than it is. It definitely leans warmer. And I do hope that, you know, Hourglass, as they continue to delve into some of their deeper shades, that they also explore some cooler tone options as well. So, uh, you know, overall though, I think it is a nice palette. And I have to say on the eyes, I've really been enjoying it. I've worn it on the eyes this way a couple times now. And I think that these, kind of these warm, rich browns, they really just speak fall to me and they work beautifully on the eyes. The blush in that like orangey blush in the, what shade is that? The sunbeam shade in the rich peach. I really like that one on the eyes to give it just a little bit of something different, a little something special. And it definitely has kind of like an orange metallic vibe to it but I think it's a really pretty palette. So I've been enjoying these on the eyes in particular. So unfortunately the Hourglass palettes are not refillable. So you can choose your color story, but that pan of six products, those do not come out. They are not refillable. I really wish Hourglass would consider that and make these like truly customizable and you can pick and choose which shades you get. The palettes, however, are made in Italy and we do have 1.4 grams of product and a one year shelf life. The palettes themselves are metal. So we have kind of this painted metal uh, for the palette and you do have a full size mirror in there. There's no room for utensils, but honestly you don't need it, need it. I think these are great for travel. They're also great, you know, just to have on your vanity, quick makeup look. Again, I really like having this deeper option as like a go-to easy like eye palette and so forth. So it would just be nice though, if we could totally customize the palette and I could have a couple of those deeper shades with the lighter palette and just kind of, you know, get everything I want for a whole face look. Now, just some notes from the Hourglass website. It says our highly anticipated ambient lighting edit unlock palettes return, featuring artwork that celebrates the beauty of nature and helps unlock change to protect animal rights. Each palette includes new and best-selling shades for a glowing complexion in a single palette. The ambient lighting edit unlocked collection includes limited edition palettes featuring snake, leopard, jellyfish, and an exclusive artwork, Owl that supports the non-human rights project in their efforts to secure fundamental rights for animals. Hourglass will donate 5% of annual profits from this collection to the non-human rights project. And again, on the Hourglass website, you can customize which case you would like with, you know, the which color story. But if you are purchasing from another retailer, you are, you know, you have those set options there. All of the artwork is done by artist K All of the artwork for these palettes is done by artist Katie Scott. And she has also made like a snake brush that is part of this collection as well. And uh, the formulas in general, according to Hourglass, are formulated with photoluminescent technology to diffuse surrounding light for skin that appears lit from within and everything's vegan and cruelty free. According to Hourglass, the powders are hand mixed to create the perfect blend of pigment and light to provide a natural flush and radiant glow. And to reduce the use of virgin plastic, the packaging is consciously crafted from 100% tin. Now, if you are interested in application techniques, they do have those listed on the Hourglass website. You can use these powders dry or wet. And obviously wet is gonna give you even more of that like glow. And they do have an entire list of things that they are formulated without if that interests you. So I will have the site linked down below. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, I did reach out to Hourglass and asked for a discount code for all of you, and they did give me a code for 10% off with Lexi. So if you use Lexi in your promo code, you'll get 10% off of your order, and they do have free shipping on orders over $50 in the US. 
So overall, my thoughts on these palettes, I think that these are really nice palettes. You know, the Hourglass formulas, I'm sure most of us are familiar with these. They are going to give you, you know, for the most part, you're getting quite a bit of glow with any of their strobe light formulas. Their diffuse powders give you more of a subtle glow, a luminosity to them, and the blushes are fairly radiant as well. We do have some matte ones. So you can get really nice, subtle, natural look with these, or you can really get something very blingy and a little bit more luminous. And I think they're a very nice, versatile palette option. So I have to say, you know, overall, I think this year they did a great job with their holiday collection. I love seeing so many more new shades included in these palettes. I do want to mention, however, that palette two, palette option number two, the one that I did not purchase, that includes five bestsellers. So there's only one new shade there and it's one new shade of blush. So that's called Ethereal Flush, which is a soft peach. So just something to note there. I think personally, if you already have Hourglass palettes at home, you know, your best options are probably Jellyfish or, um, you know, Snake for your preset color story. So option one or option three, just because of the quantity of new shades. Now, option number three did kind of make me think a little bit of this Dior palette. This is 889 Reflexion. And I just wanted to swatch this quickly because although this is gonna be deeper, it's not gonna be exactly the same or anything, this color story did remind me of the um, option three. And I think it's really more because of this like coppery shade here. You can see that this coppery hue Although it's gonna be lighter in here, you can see these two shades really kind of carry on in this color story. So it's not something you know totally similar, but it does give you a similar vibe on the eyes. If you do have this, I think it does pair nicely with these particular shades. So I hope this has been helpful. I'd love to know if you've tried any of the Hourglass palettes, what your thoughts are, and what you think of the new Hermes lipstick. So right now, the Hermes third shade is still a little bit harder to find, but it is available at Selfridges and Bergdorf's right now. So hopefully it'll be showing up at some other retailers very soon. But I have to say, I love the formula. I love the lipstick. And, uh, you know, the Hourglass palettes are great, really just nice, easy things to have on hand, especially if you're in a rush to do your makeup or if you're traveling. So let me know what you think of these products. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful day.